Hello, this is the sixth video on multivariable calculus. So in this video, we're going to talk about vector valued functions and space curves. A vector valued function is a function that assigns vectors to numbers. The trace of each vector valued function is called a space curve. So if you look at a curve in three dimensional space, we can denote every point on that curve by r of t and we usually think about t as time so that's the position of a particle in space at time t so let's look at an example identify the trace of each of the vector valued functions below the first one is x equals so if you look at the first one x equals 1 minus 2t y equals t and z equals 2 minus 3t. So we want to understand what this represents. So what is the space curve that is traveled by a particle that at time t we get this, uh, this point 1 minus 2t, t and 2 minus 3t. So this is a line based on what we have learned before and the line is uh, through the point 102 parallel to vector negative 2, 1, negative 3. So how do we get those two things? Well, the point is given by the constants here. There's no constant here, so that's basically plus 0. That's why it's 1, 0, 2. And the coefficients of t, negative 2, 1, and negative 3, are going to give us the vector parallel to the line. So next we're going to look at g of theta. So that's x equals cosine of theta, y equals sine of theta, and z equals 2. So if you look at this, and theta ranges from 0 to 2 pi. So first let's look at z equals 2. That's the easier portion. So z equals 2 is going to be a plane parallel to the xy axis, xy plane. So this is z equals 2. This is the plane z equals 2. And then we have x and y satisfy cosine theta and sine theta. So that gives us a circle of radius 1 on the plane z equals 2. So what is this? This is a circle of radius 1 centered at... So that's centered at the origin but moved two units up. So 0, 0, 2 on the plane z equals 2. So this is the trajectory of this um, vector valued function. Now if you have two vector valued functions we can talk about the operation between them. We can do the dot product or we can do the cross product uh, between those two vector valued functions. So same properties still hold. So let's look at an example here. So consider two vector valued functions f and g and we want to find the dot product and cross product of these two. So let's look at f of t dotted with g of t. So another way would be to denote it like this. Those are the same thing. So what we do is we multiply the corresponding components. So t times t minus 1 plus 2 sine of t times cosine of t plus 1 times 0. So that would be t squared minus t plus 2 sine t cosine t. So this is the dot product of these two. How do we get the cross product? Well, the exact same way that we got the cross product of two vectors. So the process is exactly the same thing. The only difference is instead of having constants, we have functions. So i, j, k going to the first row, that's what we do if we want, when we want to find cross product of two vectors. And the second row would be t2 sine t1 and the third row would be t minus 1 cosine t0. So we're going to expand this along the first row. We get i times determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. So we get 0 minus cosine of t minus j times when we eliminate the first row and the second column we get 0 minus t minus 1 and then plus k times t cosine of t minus t minus 1 times 2 sine of t. So this would be the answer to the cross product. 
Let's look at one more example. Find all points of intersection of this cylinder and the curve traced out by this vector valued function. So let's look at this um, x squared plus y squared equals 1. If we were on the xy plane, we know x squared plus y squared equals 1 would have been a circle centered at the origin. Now, because this does not depend on z, it means we get the exact same circle at all different levels. So when z equals 1, we get the exact same uh, circle, just moved one unit up. And same thing if we move down. So we get a cylinder that is, uh, its axis is the z axis. Now, we are given a vector valued function, which is x equals t, y equals 2 minus t, uh, 2t minus 1, and z equals 1. And we are also given the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 1. And we want to find the intersection of these two. So what should we expect to be the intersection? Well, it could be that it's a line that doesn't intersect the um, cylinder. It could be just completely outside or completely inside. So then there would be no intersection point. It could be that it's a line that is barely touching the cylinder. So it's a tangent line. So there is only one intersection point. It could also be a line that goes through the um, cylinder, which would give us two intersection points, or it could be that red line, which means there would be infinitely many intersection points. So we could have zero, one, two, or infinitely many intersection points. So if you solve the problem and you get three different points, then you have done something wrong. So this is kind of a sanity check that I did on this side. But let's do the calculation and figure out how many intersection points we get and what those intersection points are, which is what they are asking us to do. So we have a system of equation with four variables, x, y, z, and t, and we are trying to solve it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x and y from the first and second equation, and we're going to plug it into the last equation. We get t squared plus 2t minus 1 squared equals 1. So let's expand and see what we get. We get t squared plus 4t squared minus 4t plus 1 equals 1. Uh, the ones cancel and we get 5t squared minus 4t equals 0. So that gives us t times 5t minus 4 equals 0. So that gives us t equals 0 or 4 over 5. Now when t equals 0, we're going to plug it in. We get x equals, so x is t, so that's 0. y is 2t minus 1, so that's negative 1 and z is 1. So that's one intersection point. When t is 4 fifth, x is t, so x would be 4 fifth, y is 2t 8 fifth minus 1, and z is 1. So what are the two points that we get? The two points are 0, negative 1, 1, and 4 fifth, 8 fifth minus 1 is 3 fifth, and 1. So these are the two points of intersection of the line and the cylinder. Now to take the limit of a vector valued function, we just apply the limit to each of the components. So let's do that. So if you don't remember the rules of differentiation, the rules of taking limits, and you don't have enough practice with those, uh, you haven't had enough practice with those lately, you may want to go back and check out those topics that you have learned in single variable calculus. So let's look at the limit of this vector valued function as t approaches 2, which is what they are asking us to evaluate. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate the limit of each of the components as t approaches 2. As t approaches 2, sine of t minus 2 is going to become sine of 0, which is 0. t squared minus 4 is going to be 4 minus 4, which is also 0. So this is 0 over 0, so we can use L'Hopital's rule, and that gives us the limit. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of t squared is 2t, and derivative of 4 is 0. So now we're going to plug in the values, and t approaches 2, so we get cosine of 0 over 4, so that is 1 fourth. 
We are going to do the same thing for the next one. T approaches 2. T squared plus 2 T minus 8 over T minus 2. This is again 0 over 0. If you plug in uh, 2 on top, we get 4 plus 4 minus 8, which is 0. And at the bottom, we get also 2 minus 2, which is 0. So that's a L'Hopital's rule problem. So we could take the derivative, we get 2t plus 2 over 1, and after we plug in the value, we get 4 plus 2, which is 6. Now, we'll have to take the uh, limit of the last portion, last component. As t approaches 2, t to the power of t approaches t squared, which is 4. So the limit of f of t, which they gave us, as t approaches 2, is going to be the first component approaches 1 fourth, so it would be 1 fourth i. The second component approaches 6, so that would be 6j. And the last component approaches 4, so that would be 4k. So this would be our answer. The derivative and integral of a vector valued function is evaluated by taking the derivative or integral of each component. The derivative of vector valued functions have similar properties to what we have learned about um, real valued functions. For example, we have the product rule, uh, which is f dot g prime is equal to f prime dot g plus f dot g prime. And then the derivative of f cross g prime is f prime cross g plus f cross g prime. Now, what is the interpretation of derivative? If we look at the position of a particle in space, let's say the position is r of t, and we want to figure out what's the derivative at this point t0. What we're going to do is we're going to find the average rate of change, which is average velocity, and then we're going to divide by the time. So what is the displacement? We are going to evaluate the displacement, and then we're going to divide that by time. So what is the displacement? Displacement is r of t minus r of t naught. And then what is the time? Well, that's t minus t naught. So that means the average rate of change, which is average velocity, is going to be displacement r of t minus r of t naught divided by t minus t naught. So what is the velocity itself? It is just taking the limit, so velocity at t equals t0 is the limit of r of t minus r of t naught divided by t minus t naught as t approaches t naught. And that's exactly just the derivative. And the way we evaluate this is by differentiating each of the components. So I will do an example on this. But before that, let's also talk about acceleration and speed. So the instantaneous velocity is denoted generally by v of t0 at any, t at any time t0. And it is just differentiation. Uh, speed is magnitude of velocity. And acceleration is derivative of velocity. So let's look at an example. So the first example we're going to do is we are given the position of a particle in space, which is t plus 1i plus cosine of tj plus k. And the question is to find velocity, acceleration, and speed. So what is the velocity of this uh, particle? Well, we simply differentiate each of the components. So that gives us i minus sine of tj. And then the last component is going to become 0. Now, they told us to find the velocity at this particular point, at 1, 1, 1. So if position r of t equals 1, 1, 1, that tells us t plus 1 must be 1, cosine of t must be 1, and 1 must be 1. All of these must be true. And of course, the only point that satisfies all of these three things is t equals 0. So that means velocity at 0 is going to be i minus sine of 0 j, which is just i. So that's the velocity. Now speed is going to be magnitude of velocity, which is going to be magnitude of i, which is 1. So that's speed. And then they ask us to find the acceleration. So what is the acceleration at point t? We'll have to first derivative take the derivative of v 
and then plug in t equals 0. So that becomes minus cosine of tj, and then we're going to plug in 0, so acceleration at 0 is going to be minus j. So this is our acceleration. And let's do one more example on this topic. Suppose the velocity of a particle in space is given by that. Assume the particle is located at this point when t equals 0. Find the position of this particle when t equals 1. So here we are given the velocity and we are asked to find the position. So what's the relation between velocity and position? Derivative of position is velocity. Therefore, if you want to find uh, position, you'll have to integrate velocity. So we're going to go ahead and integrate velocity and see what we get. We get t squared over 2 plus t cubed over 3, or rather, comma, t cubed over 3 plus t squared over 2, rather, comma, t squared over 2 minus t. But then there's a plus c. Now we are given some information. We are given that at t equals 0, the position is 1, negative 1, 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 0 in, on both sides. We get 1, negative 1, 2 equals, and this guy becomes 0, because t is 0, so we get 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, so we get c is 1, negative 1, 2. So what does that tell us? It tells us that r of t is equal to t squared over 2, comma, t cubed over 3, comma, t squared over 2 minus t plus 1, negative 1, 2. Now, the question wasn't to find the position at every point. The position was to find the position, the, uh, the question was to find the position at t equals 1. So simply, we're going to substitute t equals 1. So we get r of 1 equals 1 half comma 1 third comma 1 half minus 1 plus 1 comma negative 1 comma 2. So now adding 1 half and 1, we get 3 halves. 1 third and negative 1, we get negative 2 thirds. And 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half, plus 2, we get 3 halves. So this would be the position when t equals 1. To summarize, we talked about what vector valued functions are. They give us curves in space. And then to evaluate the velocity, we differentiate position. To evaluate acceleration, we differentiate velocity. To evaluate the speed, we take the magnitude of velocity. To evaluate the position, you integrate velocity. To find velocity, you integrate acceleration. So that brings me to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.